Hey folks, Justin with Effective Remote Work here. Today we're going to talk about my process for writing literature notes inside of Obsidian. Before we dive into the workflow a bit though, I wanted to talk briefly about what a literature note is. A literature note is essentially a note that you've created where you've captured ideas and thoughts, potentially even quotes, reference materials from anything that you've consumed. It can be as simple as a blog post or as large as a book or a movie that you've seen. It can be podcasts, articles, whatnot. Anything that you're consuming that is sparking a thought for you is something that you could create into a literature note. And then these live in your system. In more formal Zettelcast and terminology, a literature note is probably more of a something that you're reading, uh, maybe a research paper or a book where you're trying to pull references from it and ideas and thoughts so that you have a place where you can come back to it and say, oh, I got this idea from this book, then you can cite your sources. But I, I firmly believe that these ideas are not just only for academics or researchers. If you are a person who works in any creative capacity and if you're doing any kind of knowledge work, you are. Having this kind of information on hand is helpful because when you have it in your system and you're thinking through it, even if it's not relevant to your job, it can help you have a broader picture understanding of how things work in life and in the world, which then you can realize patterns from that and apply it to your job, apply it to your daily life so that you can solve problems more effectively. A literature note is just one part of this process, but it's a starting point that's very easy to dive into if you're interested in taking more thoughtful notes. So on the left here, you can see I have Notion up with my residence calendar. This is something that I grabbed from Ali Abdallah. I'll be sure to put a link in the description to his video about it, but basically you can clip anything that you're consuming on the internet, such as articles or videos, right into Notion. It'll create, it'll show a created stamp here uh, with the URL, and if it's an article, it will copy in all of the content, which is pretty nice to have, and especially with the free plan with Notion, now that you don't have restrictions on the number of blocks that you can store in a free account. That's a very, very nice deal if you're interested in having a place just to capture stuff on the internet. And that's what I use Notion for is my capture bucket. So anytime that I'm reading something, especially if I don't have time to convert it into a literature note at that time, I'll just use this browser extension here to clip it right into my resonance calendar database inside Notion that I can look back at at a later time. Now, as you can see, I have a lot here that I haven't uh, referred back to for a while. That's just kind of been the craziness of my life these days. But there is one article that I wanted to dive into a little bit, and that's how to stay focused when working from home from the toggle blog. So I'll just open this one up, we'll open it as a page. You can see that I've got the full text of the article here, which is pretty cool. So today I'm gonna head over to Obsidian where I've got my daily notes set up. I'm just gonna say reviewed, and then we're gonna say uh, stay focused working from home toggle so what this will do is it'll create a wiki link to a note that hasn't been created so i'll command click or control click if you're on windows or linux and that will create the note i'll get this all set up here but generally i have a couple of different metadata categories that i like to add at the top of a file so it's usually a link so I'll copy this link over just so I have a reference of where it came from. Author, I'll just put toggle because that's the company that authored it. Topics, this is something that's nice because I can refer to different topics via wiki links here or tags if you choose to do that. But the topics in this article will be uh, remote work, productivity, focus. So I've got these added here. The last one that I like to do is I, I'll put a tag in here. It's more of a type, and this is literature note. 
that just kind of bundles all of my notes together where I'm taking information in from something and trying to convert it into my system. And then I'll also put article just because it's an article. I like to note out whether it's an article or a video or so on and so forth because it just makes it a little easier to track these things down at a later point in time. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna read through the article and start taking some notes. I'll speed this section of the video up and pause if I have any insights to share. Okay, so I've finished the article here and I've had a few thoughts that I've written down. If you noticed while I was taking notes there, I wasn't copying and pasting quotes from the article. I was trying to condense main ideas. So this first one up here, focus doesn't come naturally when working from home. You have to get used to your environment. Kind of comes from this section up here where they're talking about that. Sure, increased focus is supposed to be one of the major perks of work from home lifestyle, but none of this has been your experience so far. That, and that's true. When you work from home for the first time, sometimes you can just lock into a better focus mindset, but generally it's kind of hard. You have lots of different stuff pulling at you from different directions. And so I wanted to just consolidate that idea down and say, okay, you do have to get used to your environment because whenever you make a big change like that, you do have to spend some time to get used to it. I kind of consolidated a lot of this section here into one simple sentence, and that's partly because I have context for some of this information already. It's understood by me, um, So, but I'm just trying to pull out the insight that schedules and solid workspaces are your friend to help you focus. And lastly here, sometimes you need to have accountability uh, I'll just edit that note while here to help keep you on track because I realized that that wasn't a complete thought. One of the important things that I try to do when taking these type of notes is don't focus on copying information verbatim. The whole point of taking notes is to get you thinking about it. So if you're just basically an input output machine where you're taking stuff in and putting it out the same way or as close as possible as you can, you're not actually processing on that because it's in that processing uh, time when you're chewing on a piece of information even for just a half a second. But as you're translating it into your own words, trying to grab what's important out of it, that's what helps you get information to stick. Additionally, when you're putting it into your own words, it gives your mind a frame of reference because you start to draw from your own experiences and your own ideas, your own conclusions that you've made off of this piece of you know, literature or work that you're consuming. And it makes it a lot easier to retrieve that in the future. So I've got a few things here. You know, I mean, it's a fairly simple method for taking notes, but all I'm doing is just going through the article finding what sticks out to me as an idea and trying to condense it into my own words in a way that makes sense. Now, as you notice before, and as I mentioned, I went and extended this line here because it didn't really make sense. I wanna make sure that these notes make sense to me when I come back and read them in the future because the next step of handling this is to try to pull the main ideas out and translate those into atomic permanent notes. An atomic permanent note in this instance would be something like the power of accountability to keep you on track. And I would have two to four paragraphs in that note about why accountability is important. Drawn from this article, drawn from my own experience and drawn from other resources as well. Now, sometimes if I am not at my computer and I'm on a mobile device such as my iPhone or my iPad, I'll use an app called Drafts to capture that information and then I can very easily copy it into Obsidian at a later point in time, adding this type of metadata. 
But generally, I mean, it's just taking text notes. I don't get too crazy about pictures and annotations because for me, it's all about the ideas. And if I'm able to consolidate and integrate the ideas that I'm taking in from different things that I am consuming, that's what's helpful for me. Well, that's today's video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions on literature notes or about taking notes in general, I would love to hear them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll chat with you in the next one.